In examples two and three, we took each of our curves and forced rectangles into those, or forced our curve to fit to some rectangular shapes. Then we used the formula A, area equals length times width to come up with that approximate area. So we could repeat the same approach using any type of geometric figure. So another common approach for this idea of approximating definite integrals is to use trapezoids. So trapezoids are this kind of shape, sort of a square rectangle with a triangle sticking off one end. Or if we turn that on its side, we get a shape like this. So looking at using trapezoids, we can apply the same idea using multiple trapezoids over however many subintervals, and then calculate the area of each individual trapezoid using area equals one half height times the smaller base plus the larger base. So what we want to do is apply this idea to approximating the area under this given curve from 0 to 2. We still want to look at using four subintervals. So this will be from 0 to 0 0.5, 0 0.5 to 1, 1 to 1.5, and 1.5 to 2. So the way we'll construct these trapezoids is that at the end point of each interval, we'll draw a line up to where we hit the curve. Looks like this curve actually needs to be extended a little bit more. So we'll draw a line straight up from the x-axis till we hit our curve, and then, oops, sorry about that, draw a line connecting those two endpoints to get our trapezoidal shape. So the nice thing about trapezoids is, especially for curves like this one, that diagonal from the trapezoid ends up following very closely to the curve. So it really minimizes the amount of error that we have in our calculations. And for this last one, pretty much is at 0, 0. So really, we just kind of have a triangle. So drawing those trapezoidal shapes gives us much less error with each of those subintervals. In this case, the distance or the length of each subinterval is the equivalent of the height for each trapezoid, since the height of our trapezoid would be this edge. And then the left and right endpoints give us our larger and smaller bases for each of those trapezoids. So switching back to Wolfram Alpha, we can still ask it to integrate our function which in this case is 2t cubed plus 7t using the trapezoid method from x equals 0 to 2 with four subintervals. So again, Wolfram Alpha is going to give us that picture of how it's creating those trapezoids, so a slightly better representation. And we can see almost no difference between the tops of those trapezoids and the curve. There is some amount of error in there, but we're getting an approximate value for that integral of 22.5. So what we're actually looking to calculate in this case is, again, the integral of this function from 0 to 2, that exact value should be 22, and we got as our approximate value 22.5. So obviously 22 and 22.5 are very, very close to each other. So this trapezoidal method gives us a way to, in some cases even better than that midpoint method, really minimize the amount of error in our approximations. So getting closer and closer to what that exact value should be. So we've looked at two different methods, using rectangles and using trapezoids. Regardless of the method we use, something to keep in mind is that we get a better approximation So we get an answer that's closer to the actual precise result as we use more subintervals. So essentially what's happening as we look at those different subintervals, we're taking 
length 1 times width 1. So we're looking at the, if for instance, the rectangular method. We're looking at the length of that first rectangle times its width plus the length of the second rectangle times its width plus the length of the third rectangle times its width and so on and so on. We're adding up all of those length times widths until we get to the nth rectangle. So in order to look at evaluating definite integrals precisely, what we're doing is taking the sum, so this Greek letter sigma is used in math as a way to represent the summation of all of those length times widths. So we're going to take the length and the width plus the length and the width plus the length and the width for values of i going from 1 to n. So if we're using four subintervals, this would be from 1 to n. So we would add length times width four different times. So this gives us a more general expression for what we're doing with this, adding up all of these different terms. What we want to do is consider taking this to higher and higher levels of subintervals. So we don't want just four subintervals. We maybe want 100 subintervals, 1,000 subintervals. So we want to think of n getting extremely large. Or even more precisely, we want to consider the limit of this expression as n goes to infinity. And that is more or less going to give us our precise definition for what a definite integral is. So to evaluate the definite integral of this function from a to b is going to be adding up the, the product of the length and the width of an infinite number of rectangular regions. But in the next section, we'll take a look at a formula that we use, an approach that we can use to get those results a little bit more precisely and directly.